biggest questions for each team in the division. Then we'll go around rapid fire and do what we've done the past years and just go the best position groups in the division to give you an idea of how the talent is spread out throughout it. And then we'll talk maybe if there are any coaches we believe are on the hot seat. And then finally, we will wrap up with projections. Anyhow, let's get right to it, Zach. Um, first, let's start with biggest questions and I'll, I'll let you go first. What is the biggest question for your San Francisco 49ers? <laughs> there are so many. There are so many. And, and you know, the there's a – I mean, the easy one is the quarterback room, right? Like, what's what's going on? Who is starting? Who's doing what? Who's getting traded? Uh, you know, where is Jimmy Garoppolo's um, healing going or his um, progress on his injury – um, I heard I, I read recently that he's approaching throwing again or is throwing again or will throw again very soon, something like that. Um, and then he'll be traded and then this whole thing will be done. But um, my question really is, you know, I, can this team provide or kind of produce the same? And then obviously the question, the answer is no. But like, I guess sort of. So my question would be like, how do you make up for a world where the San Francisco 49ers are post Debo Samuel, you know, how do you make up for that production? Just because there's all this stuff about the contract going on and yes, you know, there's a, a lot of time left in the off season and uh, chances are that the re like so nothing's happened yet. You know, it could be surprising, but I feel like Debo is going to be on the Niners next year. I hope he is at least, but um, you know, worst case scenario, what happens if you have to trade him or you have to get rid of him and he's not on the roster next year, can you survive with the roster that you have? Um, I don't know if we were supposed to answer these questions or not. I, 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 I mean, my answer is I don't think it's necessarily possible with the roster that you have. Uh, I think that um, the receiving core of the Niners is not very deep past their starters. Their slot guy doesn't even really do much. Jawan Jennings, um, even though he's a, he's a relatively young player, um, only had like a handful of catches in the playoffs last year. Um, so you know where the offensive sort of reliability is or uh, reliance is. It's on Debo and Brandon Ayuk. But can you survive? Can you survive if Brandon Ayuk has to become your number one? Or do you make it so you get some trade value back? You get a receiver from whoever you send Debo to. There, there's a ton ton of questions about where he's where he's going to end up and if the Niners can survive without him. And it's pretty bleak. Honestly, if this if this doesn't work out and Debo's elsewhere in the league, it, it's tough. It's a tough sell for sure. Yeah, no, that's there's no question about it, but it's not good if Debo doesn't end up on the Niners. That said, I, I really do think I will be honestly shocked if he's out of there. I've said this really since the beginning. Kyle Shanahan is not going to let him get out of the building. The Niners are not going to let him get out of the building. This is not an A.J. Brown scenario. This is... The Niners know that they have a generational offensive talent at wide receiver, and they are going to make sure that he is happy. So I, I really don't see him moving on this offseason at all. I think that's a great question you had about the Niners. Uh, I'll take the, the Rams here. Um and I guess my biggest question for them is also a wide receiver. Um, you've got a starting tandem of Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson, and that's nothing to slouch at. But beyond that, you know, things get a little bit thin. Your third wide receiver is Van Jefferson. You wonder if maybe they'll bring back Odell Beckham, maybe midway through the season once he's closer to getting healthy. That would seem like a match that would make sense to me. But it just seems to me like the Rams have a real question at wide receiver right now. And I'm interested to see how it all plays out because they're, they're very thin, you know, Cooper cup was very, very good last year. And one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, 
Allen Robinson has a track record of success, but if you look at how he played in Chicago last year, it does not inspire a lot of confidence. He was not good for them. It looked like he stopped trying at points, and I get it's the Bears and you don't have a quarterback, but still, you're playing in the NFL. You want a guy to look engaged and remain competitive, and I worry that he took games off last year, and you can't have that if you're given the money he was given by the Rams this offseason. So I'm just interested to see how this passing attack plays out because they are very thin at wide receiver. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see it. Um, I, I do think Van Jefferson had a had a, he had a pretty okay season. I mean, he didn't he, he kind of contributed where he could. I feel like it's tough that's kind of a share the love situation, especially when you have Cooper cup and Odell Beckham last year in front of him. Uh, It was just, I I can imagine that that's just kind of tough for him to get touches in general, but um, yeah, you bring up a point. I, it'd be interesting to see kind of what happens with Allen Robinson, just because um, you're going to, you're going to see what it's like, you know, what he's like with purpose now Uh, you know, it's just tough. It's tough to justify playing in Chicago for that long. You know, it's, that, that man's been through it for sure. And so, but yeah, you're right. It'll be interesting to see um, kind of how they, how they handle that. I mean, I don't know. Cause Cooper cup, I think is, is re- like, he'll take you most of the way. So it's just a matter of who can kind of fill in the gaps, I would say, but uh, that's an interesting point. I mean, yeah, the, the rest of their team is, is pretty stacked outside of uh, other than that, really. I mean, their line, uh, is pretty good. The defense is amazing. And yeah, y- your quarterback is figured out now. So, I mean, just where, where else can you get better, but a uh, wide receiver there? I totally agree. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out for the Rams. I'm going to ask you the Seahawks. What's your biggest question for them? <laughs> I mean, again, it's one of the, cause, cause the, the, all these teams have a, have a similar problem going on. And, and that's that the quarterback room is weird right now. I mean, the Rams are good. You know, they have their guy. But, you know, San Francisco, you have the stuff with Trey Lance and Jimmy G. Arizona, you, which we'll get to, you have Kyler Murray maybe holding out. Probably not, but, like, scrubbing socials and stuff. So there's there's some stuff going on there. And and it brings us to the same the same thing with Seattle. I mean, and it, I mean, yeah, you're arguing between – to you know c plus level quarterback so it's not really that you're picking who wants to finish last the best i guess but um you know it's one of those like do they think like what what do you think what conversation that's my question is what conversations do you think are happening in the front office of the seattle seahawks are they are they like playoff push or are they like first overall pick like you know what what's the philosophy there because I, I think that with the departure of Russell Wilson, a lot of these band-aids kind of get torn off and they, they didn't really do much to fix it. Uh, you know, the quarterback room is, is one problem, but I mean, up and down the roster, it's just not, it's not as strong as you want it to be. I mean, the offense could get something going. I mean, you got Rashad Penny back um, and Chris Carson, if he's healthy, Uh you know, DK's back. He, he didn't end up getting traded, you know, Ty, him and Tyler Lockett. That's a nice duo. Um, you have some guys in the defense that, that can make some plays. I mean, obviously you have Jamal Adams, Cody Barton is starting now. That's a Utah guy. Um, and there's, but I mean, yeah, it's just, other than that, the, there, this is just a very talent poor roster. So uh, yeah, my, my question is like, what do you think they're talking about? <laughs> like what, how do you attack this season? when you have like six guys on your roster that people know the names of? It's an interesting question. I think yes, to the untrained football fans, eye that this roster is sort of talent poor, but I look at it. I, I really don't see it that way. I mean, Kenneth Walker, the second is a guy they drafted really early this year who a lot of people think was the best running back in this draft class. You still have a tremendous wide receiving core of DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, even though it gets very thin after that. Those are two great starters to have. And you add Noah Fant to the mix. Noah Fant 
never really had a quarterback in Denver, but was always one of Denver's top targets over the past few years. He is a very good receiving tight end. They draft Charles Cross to help fix that offensive line a little bit. I don't know. I really don't see the first overall pick when I see this team. I, I think that Pete Carroll has a lot of job security, and I do think he's an okay enough coach where they are going to be a four to seven win team. Like they're, they're just going to get those wins because you add Shelby Harris to the defense and that's really a big move. Shelby Harris was one of the Broncos best defenders over the last few years. You have Uchenu Unwoso who has gotten much better and who is a guy that can almost immediately make an impact for your defense this year. And you still have a pretty good safety tandem in the back with Jamal Adams and uh, Quandre Diggs. I think it's a little bit more clear to me the way what the Seahawks are. And that is a team that's going to be in the middle of the road. And that will have some surprising wins where we say, wow, the Seahawks won that game. That's crazy. And that's kind of the way I I see it playing out. You know what I'm talking about? Like there's always that team where they're universally panned in the off season. But the reality is at some point this year, this team will run into the Niners or the Rams or the Cardinals and they'll get a win And people will be like, wow, are the Seahawks really building towards something? But ultimately, they're not a playoff team, and they'll probably end up with a top 10 pick this year. But I don't think they're as bad as maybe you make them out to be. That's fair. They, they, I think that they're a little more built out uh, on the depth chart than than I I honestly, uh, than I give them credit for. Um, there are some interesting names on here. Uh, you got Marquise Goodwin. He was he hot. He's hopped around a couple teams, but I'm um, nothing uh, steady production out of him. There, yeah. There's just some names on here that that I like, and I, I see that this is not a roster where you're looking at it like you're looking at the Texans or something like that, where it's just it's just whoever you can get in a jersey. You know, there there is definitely like they're a step up from that from that level, not too far away, but um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean. And we're, we're going to get again to the Cardinals, so it's tough to to make this, to have this take. But I, I mean, a lock for fourth place, right, in the West. Like, unless I mean, one of these other teams just has an astronomically weirdly bad season. I mean, yeah, n- I, no playoffs, top ten pick. I agree with that, but probably last in the West, unless again, unless Arizona does, you know, they 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 can go really far south as well, but. Um, it's just, it's a tough division, I think, because it's tough to make a call. So you, you have another year, you develop some guys, you get another good draft pick, and you just see you see what next year's free agency is like. Right. The Cardinals, my question for them is the linebacking group. I think it's a huge question mark. You know, Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins have shown flashes in their young careers, but neither have done enough to convince me that they're Pro Bowl level linebackers. They seem pretty replacement level on this defense and this defense was mediocre against the run last year and kind of struggled in stopping that do you think the Cardinals linebackers will be better this year and do you think the defense as a whole with some really aging names on it like J.J. Watt and Marcus Golden and Byron Murphy um do you think that the defense can hold up and remain league average as they sort of were last year and that can keep the Cardinals in the conversation of being a playoff team? I I think they're close and there's definitely like, there's definitely a potential for it. Um, But there, there is also a scenario in which all, you know, the, the guy, the aging names that you, that you mentioned, you know, the year comes, the time comes, right. And they fall off, they finally fall off, uh, you know, and so 
there's just a lot of question marks, I think. And I think you have it right with Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons, where I think that the Cardinals were banking a lot more on immediate success than, than what they have gotten. And so it might be a situation where, um, I mean, these picks could, these picks are starting to look bad is the thing. Uh, and especially if, um, you know, I've been hearing it, you know, there's, there's a possibility that, that this team just tanks and is awful. Uh, and the more I look at the roster, the more I'm inclined to not believe it or, or agree with it, but at least like see that it's possible. Um, I think that they're really, especially on defense, I think that they're really um, uh, thin you know, after their starters. I think their starters are actually okay uh, relative to the other, maybe not in the NFC West, but in, to other teams in the NFC, I think their defense is fine. I think it'll hold up and, and, middle of the road defense for sure. Uh, but I think that if it does have the potential to go anywhere, it's going to be to regress and get worse. Um, just because you have so many different variables at play, you have the aging guys that you mentioned getting older and their, their production dropping off, but you also have the potential that Zayman Collins and Isaiah Simmons don't work out. And now you have a couple, you have these two picks on your hands, that these two very highly picked players that really aren't worth what you paid for them. And so, um, I, I could see it I, I like maybe a B a, a B offense at or defense at best, I think, unless they way overreach and overproduce. But um, yeah, the, the, the floor is pretty low and the ceiling is also pretty low. I think. Yeah. It'll, it will be really interesting to see how, how that plays out. But Cardinals in general are just a really interesting one. I, I could have asked a question about Kyler Murray. I tried to go, I tried to keep my questions as non quarterback specific as possible, but um, yeah, they, they are just a weird team that could be pretty good in a playoff team, or it, it, it could sort of fall apart for them. It, it, it's very in the middle how, how I think that'll end up playing out. 